Porta tweeter. You ever seen one? You probably haven't. As far as I know, none exists other than the engineer who designed this one. Now, when I posted this on Facebook, I had a couple people comment and say, oh yeah, so-and-so company makes ported tweeters, but they don't. Um, a open back tweeter is not the same thing as a ported tweeter. Think of a ported tweeter as a cavity that is tuned to a certain frequency to extend low frequency response, just like you have in your standard subwoofer designs or your bookshelf speaker, tower speaker, those kind of things, right? To give you more bass. Why would you want that in a tweeter, you might ask? And honestly, to me, it just seems pretty obvious. And it's surprising that nobody thought of it until Alex did. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But the reason that you would want a ported tweeter is to simply extend the lower frequency response. Why would you want to do that? Well, if you understand directivity, then you understand that as a midwoofer starts to increase in frequency that it's playing, as it approaches the frequency that is about equal to its effective diameter, then it becomes non-pistonic and it becomes to, or it starts to beam, meaning that the waveform is no longer uniform around it. The waveform starts to tighten up. The radiation pattern starts to tighten up, becomes more focused, but as it becomes more focused, it also exhibits side lobes, which are little spurious frequencies that will pop up and stand out at different axes. And when you try to cross a woofer to a standard tweeter and you use a higher crossover point in order to not destroy that tweeter, then you result in directivity mismatches where you have lobing effects, you have narrowing radiation of the midwoofer, but a wide radiation of the tweeter. And when that happens, you create tonality, timbre type shifts. The soundstage is non-uniform anymore because certain frequencies are spreading out into the room while other ones are not, and that is a problem. Now, in the home audio world, these issues are mostly resolved, but in car audio, it's really a big problem because the further you separate the midwoofer from the tweeter, the more likely you are to run into those directivity mismatches. And you can imagine most cars have a standard door-mounted woofer, and if you have a tweeter, if you're lucky enough to have a tweeter, it's probably mounted up in the A-pillar somewhere or in the cell panel somewhere. And some cars will have additional mid-ranges, maybe a center channel, etc. But most standard cars, at least the baselines, are going to have a standard two-way design like that. But even if you do have the luxury of having a mid-range, more than likely it's not co concentrically located or coaxially located with your tweeter, which still means that you're going to have an issue with crossing the tweeter over to the mid-range or the mid-woofer. Well, lowering the frequency that the tweeter like this is able to play by porting it allows you to have a better match in your horizontal and vertical dispersion pattern. And for a car, that's a really good thing. So getting back to Alex, the inventor of this, I was on LinkedIn a couple months ago, maybe, maybe not even quite that long. But I started scrolling through and I saw where Renee Christensen, who I had on this channel a few months back, had made a comment to a fellow who came up with a ported tweeter. And I thought, man, that's cool. So I just, you know, haphazardly threw out, hey, if you're interested in sending your tweeter to me, I'd be more than happy to test it out. And the dude was like, yeah, sure. And I had it in three days. That, I mean, that's really cool. Now, this is not a finished design. This is a prototype. And that's what he sent me. He sent me one of his prototypes. And so what I'm talking about today is an idea. It's not something that is produced, mass produced, and it's not something that you can go out and buy right now. This is more of an informational, informational type video because it's cool. It's just flat out cool. It's rare that I see something that really strikes me as, oh, that's neat. I've not seen that before. And when I do, I want to, you know, give it some lip service. I want people to see that it's available and it's out there. And Alex, the inventor of this, and he holds a patent for the Porta Tweeter. He is looking more to get into, I guess, like OEM car audio and work with manufacturers in that regard and for them to use his design. But he did send this to me so I could play around with it. And I told him, hey, man, this is cool. Do you mind if I make a video? And, and obviously he said, sure, no problem, because, yeah, let's be real. It gets him a little bit of airtime. Now, I was not paid for this review uh, there's no affiliate links that I can throw out for this thing. It's just 
I love this stuff. I think it's cool. I wanted to highlight it. So here we are. Rather than me just jabber on about it, I'm going to show you some data that I collected. Now, the data that I collected was done two different ways. It was done in a ported fashion like you see here, but then I'll also stuff these little ports all the way around here to seal it up. And then we can compare the sealed versus the ported. All these measurements were conducted on my Clipple near field scanner, and it's using the baffle measurement method, which allows me to get two pi, basically infinite baffle measurements out of this speaker using a four foot diameter baffle. And that's wicked cool. So shout out to Clipple for making some awesome stuff. We're going to start off with the impedance so I can show you how this tweeter is tuned. And it's tuned to about one kilohertz, as you can see. And it's evidenced by this little dip in the impedance down here at the bottom. Now, I don't have phase here. That's my bad. And honestly, the reason I didn't want to put phase on here was because I thought it might just make this graphic a little bit too mucky. But yeah, you can see the clear impedance dip at around one kilohertz. That's where the tweeter is tuned. Now we're looking at the frequency response of the sealed version in blue versus the ported version in red. And you can clearly see how much low end the ported version of this tweeter is going to give you. You're looking at about plus, almost plus eight or nine dB at some spots, probably at the lowest of the frequencies, which is centered around about 1400 hertz or so. Now, if you've been designing crossovers and you're familiar with speaker design, the first thing you're probably thinking is the same thing that I thought, which was, well, how do you design a filter for that? Well, remember what I said, the idea here is that somebody will see this little design and they'll think, that's awesome, I wanna use it in car. Now, car audio systems are DSP oriented. There's just no sense, no money in creating passive filters for multiple array speaker systems. That just doesn't make any sense. I mean, they're packing a ton of power and a ton of DSP into small little square boxes these days. And that's the idea here is that DSP will be used to implement a crossover that will provide you with whatever slope you need to match up to a woofer or a mid-range. Now, moving on, I have the full set of frequency response data. I have this at different angles, zero degrees, 30 degrees, and 60 degrees. Zero with black, 30 degrees blue, 60 degrees green. All of the dashed lines are the sealed responses. And you can kind of do your own direct comparisons there and see how the trend is basically the same off axis so the directivity is not affected with this design. It's simply the low frequency is boosted in this design. The ported response mimics a waveguided design. It actually looks like, a matter of fact, if you showed me just this graphic and said, what do you think? I would say, well, one's a regular tweeter and the other one's a waveguided tweeter. And the reason I say that is because the directivity is handled really well because it's a, it's a good tweeter already, but the LF bump, so the low frequency bump that you get from the tuning, the lower frequency tuning for the ported enclosure, provides a little bit of a boost like a horn loaded waveguide would. And I just think that's kind of neat. Now, the cool thing is that's basically headroom. So with DSP, or if you wanted to use a passive crossover, you would attenuate that, but now you can get more output at those lower frequencies if you wanted to, or you simply let it run down maybe an octave lower. So you could run down to, and I'm just throwing out a number here. So let's say 1500 Hertz instead of three kilohertz, you've gained that extra octave. So now you can make up for better directivity matching, but you throw a steep filter on it at the appropriate crossover point, And now you're in business. And now you're probably thinking, okay, well, what's the purpose of doing all that then? And, and does it hurt me in terms of SPL? Well, Let's look at a simple metric, and this is just going to be THD at 86 dB. Ported is in red, sealed is in blue. And you can see that between about 1.6 or 1.7 kilohertz to about maybe 3.5 kilohertz, you do have a reduction by about 10 dB or so, and that's roughly 1% to 0.3%. So there is certainly a reduction in THD at 86 dB. Now, what about 96 dB? You still see that reduction around the same frequencies, but you're also probably thinking, just as I was, well, there's not really much reduction in the lower frequencies. And, and to some degree, that's to be expected. With ported designs, what usually happens is you have lower THD or lower distortion artifacts above that tuning frequency, 
And around and at and below that tuning frequency, usually what you'll find is the ported response exhibits higher distortion. The group delay that we see here shows us the difference between the sealed version and the ported version, where again, the ported is in red, and you can see that the delta is about half a millisecond at most. So anyway, that's it for this video. Again, I really just wanted to kind of recap something that I thought was cool. This is a patented design. I will make sure to link the patent number and I'll throw a quick screenshot up here so you can see that it is legitimate indeed. To my surprise, no one else has patented this as far as I can tell. And frankly, I'm just, I don't know, I'm kind of perplexed that why hasn't somebody thought of doing this before? And how has this not been patented? Patented, it's a tough word to say, by somebody else. It's just, like I said, it surprises me. I think it's cool. And I wanted to share with all of you guys, if you're a manufacturer and you're interested in this design and, and the other one that Alex has out there, which I'll toss a screenshot of up here, go to his website. You can get in contact with him. Don't ask me about it. I don't know any more than what I'm telling you here and what the data shows me. I just thought it was a cool design. I wanted to share with the world. At any rate, Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. And if you weren't aware of this, now you are. If you are new to this channel, please make sure you take the time to subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoyed this stuff. And if you do, then I'll know to keep bringing you this kind of information because there's a lot of little neat stuff that I see out there, but I just don't know how much interest there is from the community and this kind of stuff. And you know, where do I spend my time? Do I review speakers? Do I build DIY speakers? Do I hunt down cool stuff like this and test it out and share it with the world? You tell me. Let me know by liking it, leaving a comment below. And with that all said, I will talk to you all later. Take care. Peace.